blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope that God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive a great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through stubble. They will govern nations and rule over people, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Be we will read Psalm 24 in unison. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? 
those who have clean hands and a pure heart, both pledge themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is they shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high and everlasting Lord. The King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He is dwelling with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord.
the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. What might you call the name of the place where the Christian journey begins for many of us? Maybe the baptismal font is a good start. There it is, back there at the entrance to the church. As you come into the place of worship, you can remember where the journey began. As a space in the church, you might call it the baptistry. That's another fancy word for it. Historically, it would have been in a building next to the church, specifically used for baptisms. There's another word for it. I came across in my research this for this morning, for the sermon. It's a mouthful, it's a Greek word. Photisterion. You may have never heard that, photisterion. If you're a science geek like me, you may recognize the photo part, photon, as in a unit of light. Photisterion is a Greek word that means the place of Illumination, that's what it means. The Christian journey begins in the place of illumination, a place where light shines, the place where light is found, the place where light becomes a part of you. By the year 160, baptism is referred to as illumination by St. Justin Martyr, in his early accounts on baptism and Holy Eucharist. And at the risk of sounding like a bit of a broken record after a recent homily for a burial service, I did want to talk about 
All Saints Day and the events of our celebration today within the framework of illumination, of light. Although our gospel reading this morning does not mention light, the gospel of John is full of references to light. Before Jesus foretells of his coming death, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then before Jesus heals the man who is born blind, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And then Jesus speaks again about his coming death after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And he says, the light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. Children of light. Now the primary focus of All Saints Day, and by extension this All Saints Sunday, is the celebration of the saints of light. And here I'm referring mostly to the great heroes of our faith. The capital S saints, you might call them. These people of extraordinary faith are imperative for the way in which they illumined the path that Jesus called them so that others might dare follow in their footsteps. We have symbolic representations of four of such saints here in the church behind the altar, the four evangelists, blessed Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These extraordinary individuals began their journey of faith in much the same way that we do today, receiving the light of Christ in baptism, illumination. These and many others are prime examples of how humanity might carry this light of Jesus that took up residence in them at their baptism. We also take time today to remember those whom we have individually known, those who have followed Jesus in our own lifetimes, having also received the illumination of baptism and journeyed with Jesus. We do this acknowledging the church's celebration of All Souls Day or All the Faithful Departed, which is customarily on November 2nd but we will remember them today. And as you remember these beloved members of Christ's body now at rest, think about the illumination that they brought to your world, the legacy of Christ in them that they left for you and for so many others. But alas, that's not all. This is a very busy day for the church. We also bring to mind how we each began our own new lives in Jesus Christ. How we became children of light. Our very own illumination at baptism. As we renew, recommit ourselves to the promises that we've once made to be the light of Jesus. As an active and loving community of, of faith in the place that God has placed us. And again, that is not all, because finally today we have two individuals this morning that will receive the illumination of Jesus Christ. They will be baptized into his life, death, and resurrection. Catherine and her son, Luke, will share a birthday after this morning, a baptismal birthday, new birth, the beginning of ...of a new life in Christ. This is how the light gets into us. This is how the light got into the saints. This is how the light 
got into those whom we love but see no longer. And as we carry that light, or begin to carry that light, our first inclination is likely to carry the light that we receive so that we might see where we are going. That is most appropriate and true. For we must watch our steps carefully as we walk this life as children of God. The light of Christ is good for that. But eventually, we may come to realize that we carry the light so that others may see the way. That others might also find the light of Christ. So that others may be illuminated too by this light of Christ. Let us joyously celebrate the path of illumination that God has made for us and the people that have and will walk this path as beloved sons of daughters of God and Jesus Christ. And let us support one another as we seek to faithfully carry this light as the body of Christ, as the continuing presence of Jesus Christ in the world now today, and for the days ahead. Amen. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. So, I present Catherine to receive the sacrament of baptism. Catherine, do you desire to be baptized? I do. And now, would the rest of you stand in the first row? Y'all ready to present Luke? I present present Luke Luke to receive receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, will with with God's God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will will with with God's God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Would the congregation please stand? This question is for the rest of you here. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Remain standing, please. Dear people of God, in holy baptism, we have become part of that great fellowship of believers in all times and places, the communion of saints. In baptism, God has adopted us as children and made us members of Christ's body and inheritors of God's kingdom with the saints in light. Joining with those who are committing themselves to Christ, let us now renew the vows of our baptism by which God has made us a holy people. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. 
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. We will process to the back for the baptism, so you're welcome to turn around as we make our way back there. for me. Sure. All right, so we need, okay, good. We have the critical pieces here. <laughs> Just check. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now it's time. You ready? Catherine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's good, Luke. Luke.
I baptize you in the name of God the Father. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we get that? Can we get that little? You want to? You want to dab that with your towel? With your little towel there. There we go. We are on Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well done, sir. Well done, sir. Now let us pray. I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Catherine, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and mark as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Luke, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Catherine, receive the light of Christ. Can you do that? Or, okay, you can extra hand. And uh, Dad's going to serve as a proxy here. Luke, receive the light of Christ. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. It is a glorious day uh, full of all sorts of great things, right, and baptisms. And I want to let you know that there will be plenty of cake to celebrate the baptisms at coffee hour afterwards. So please do join us through the double doors into the next building, turn right, and that is where we will gather for some time of fellowship. So please join us in celebrating the baptisms and everything else that's taking place. So. 
We have a lot on the calendar. If you would like to take a look at the upcoming events on the back of your bulletin, those are for the week ahead. Uh, also, we have a, what's the word, a bulletin, a newsletter that goes out weekly called The Voice. I hope you're all subscribed to that so you know what's happening in the life of the church. If you would like to subscribe to that, there is a place in the visitor card in the pew back in, just in front of you. You can fill that out and we'll add you to that distribution list. If you're visiting us for the first time and would like uh, to fill this out, we invite you to do that and we would like to formally welcome you to your time with us here. We also have a gift bag for you after the service. There's also a place for confidential prayer requests inside and I'll be happy to say those prayers throughout the week if you fill that out. Drop it in the offering plate as it comes by, please. I do want to make sure everyone knows we are in the midst of stewardship season. Our in-gathering Sunday is scheduled for November 17th. If you have not already prayerfully considered giving to the mission and ministry of Good Shepherd, uh, I would like to invite you to do that and get those back into the church as soon as possible. If you have not received a pledge card, we do have extra pledge cards available for you in the table, on the table in the narthex. So please do make sure to pick one of those up. You can also drop those in the offering plate as well. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries celebrated this week that I might pray for? All these people? No birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. If not, then we'll move to the next thing on the agenda, if you will. The rededication of the daughters of the king, or the renewal. I'm not using the right word there. Let's see what the right word is. It is rededication. Would the daughters of the king please stand and come forward? It is customarily around the Feast of All Saints that the DOK, the daughters of the king, a ministry of the church, rededicate themselves to the commitment and vows that they once made. These are a group of ladies who have dedicated themselves to prayer, service, and evangelism. And we are so thankful for the work they do in the church. Do you all all have one of these? Members of the Order of the Daughters of the King are gathered here in the sight of God to rededicate themselves to its rule of life, a vow of daily prayer, service, and evangelism. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord, show us your mercy. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Strengthen us, Lord, to think, to do, and say always those things that are right. Enable us who cannot exist without you to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Order of the Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the spread of Christ's kingdom, especially among women and girls through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to continue your membership in the order? I do, with God's help. Are you ready, so long as you remain a member of the order, to wear its cross faithfully and to work for its purposes, as God may give you the opportunity? Almighty and merciful God, since it is only by your gift of grace that your faithful people do true and praiseworthy service, bless your servants who have signified their desire to continue in your holy service as members of the order of the daughters of the king. Guide them to lead godly lives and to labor faithfully for the spread of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Spirit guide and strengthen you, that in this and in all things you may do God's will in the service of the kingdom of Christ. Amen.
Congratulations, ladies. Congratulations. I missed the other side. Congratulations. There were a few others. Congratulations. And let's congratulate the newly baptized, shall we? Catherine and Luke. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you, 
to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Him to be glorified by you, His heavenly Father, having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. At supper with them He took bread, and when He had given thanks to you, He broke it and gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat, this is My body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you we, we bless you, you we, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth.
Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially those within the last year. Russell Bowie. James Callahan. Diane Hutzler. Leanne Jackson. David Mather. Nelda McCullough. David McGill. Carol Ann Mills. Liz Perkins. Harold Rayleigh. Bobby Reed. Lannis Sheffield. John A. Sonnet. <laughs> Betty Stacy. <laughs> Myra Stefik. Buddy Thomas. Francis Wilburn. Kay Wilson. All those whom we love but see no longer. And those whose faith is known to you alone, bring them into the joy, the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
invite you to stand or kneel as we continue in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.